I'm reminded of something that my mother once said to me. When you're seasoning the food that you're cooking, a little goes a long way. It just takes time. It was an important lesson, and not just about cooking. Little changes have a way of becoming big changes in time. What seems like the necessary amount of change at the time can create more problems down the road, like adding too much pepper to a dish. What tasted just right when it was first added is now overpowering. Little changes make a big difference in the economy, too. Let's talk about that. I've noticed quite a few progressives and socialists out there who want the government to solve every problem through sweeping legislation. I've read their tweets and listened to them say that we aren't doing enough to eradicate poverty, clean up the environment, provide access to health care, and similar things. I know that some are even claiming that the capitalist system is fatally flawed and should be abolished. Well, in response, let me tell you a story about a friend of mine who worked in a water treatment plant. The waterworks plant treats the water going into the system in order to make sure that it's safe to drink, and it's a fascinating process. First, the water gets aerated to stop the growth of algae, and then fed into a settling tank to remove suspended particles. The water then gets filtered, often through a sand and gravel bed, to remove any residual particles. This makes sure that it's safe to drink, so that it can be piped into the supply system that feeds the taps to homes and businesses. Part of that treatment in this waterworks involved chlorine, a common method for purifying water. Now, chlorine treatment has to be done carefully. Too little, and the water may still have harmful bacteria in it. Too much, and the water can become toxic. Either way, water chlorination has to be monitored, and there is a narrow band which is considered to be properly treated water. The chlorine was added as a drip in the feeder pipe between the settling tank and the filters. The adjustments for this were very fine adjustments. There was a monitor checking the residual chlorination as the water left the plant, right where the water entered the drinking water system. Because of the setup, it took at least four hours for a change in the chlorine drip to show up as a change in the chlorination levels at the sensor. Well, my friend had a co-worker on another shift who was impatient. Oh, he checked the chlorination monitors just like he was supposed to do, and he adjusted the chlorine drip, too. What he didn't do, though, was wait four hours to check the effects of the changes. After only an hour, he checked the sensor, and if the chlorination reading wasn't right in the middle of the acceptable band, then he'd adjust the chlorine drip again, chasing that sweet spot. This resulted in the chlorination levels fluctuating more, on rare occasions even drifting outside of the acceptable band. And my friend usually worked the shift immediately after this impatient co-worker. So, he usually had more work to do trying to figure out what was going wrong, and normally started his shift by resetting the chlorine drip, which was usually quite a bit off from baseline settings. By the end of his shift, the chlorination was typically close to the center of the acceptable band. When the co-worker was questioned about the problems with chlorination levels on his shift, his response was that the system was the problem. He couldn't control the chlorination properly because the feed mechanism was inefficient, and nothing was going to convince him otherwise. The fact that water treatment systems are designed to be inherently stable, and thus take time to adjust, was beyond his understanding. This anecdote illustrates a similar problem which exists in most complex systems, including economies, fighting against inherent stability. The U.S. economy is a capitalist economy. Now, capitalism is the worst economic model to follow, except for every other economic model, that is. That's because capitalism is based on risk versus reward, and that makes it vulnerable to the fundamental vice of greed. Society is stratified by wealth in a capitalist system. A few are wealthy. Some live in luxury, but not wealth. Somewhat more live in comfort, but not luxury and a rather large portion of the population survives without comfort. There is poverty in a capitalist system, too, and nobody actually wants poverty to exist. It is possible to reduce poverty in a capitalist system, though, by raising the average per capita income without creating a similar increase in the cost of living. How do we do that? 
by fostering a slight labor shortage, paired with a sensible tax system and reasonable limits on government spending. If those things happen, then business owners will be forced to pay more wages to compete for labor, which they will be able to afford without raising prices due to the reasonable tax rates they pay, which means that society in general will have more disposable income. You see, if the government simplifies tax codes, then it can lower the top marginal rates without losing revenue. Lowering top marginal rates will mean that businesses will bring more of their money earned overseas back to the U.S. That means that business owners will be able to invest in more domestic production, which will mean more jobs. More jobs means that we tighten the labor market, which means more wages. More wages means more spending and more investing by society overall. That will raise GDP, which will increase the tax base, which will mean that even if there is a short-term dip in government revenues, they will recover and even surpass the projected revenues before the changes were made to the tax code. Now, if that's coupled with smart immigration policy tied to the labor market, then that slight labor shortage can be fostered long-term. It also means that as the labor market tightens, less dependency on government aid will exist reducing the amount of non-discretionary spending in the government budget. If that decrease is coupled with a reduction in the growth of discretionary government spending, then the budget deficit will disappear as government revenues continue to increase faster than the federal budget. The savings will eventually create a surplus, which can then be used to reduce federal debt, which will further reduce the budget due to another portion of non-discretionary spending. The cost of servicing the national debt will go down. I have no illusion that federal debt will disappear, especially since it's part of how the government regulates market volatility. But it will reduce as a percentage of GDP, and that will strengthen our economy further. As that strength increases, the labor market will become even tighter, and we can allow more immigration to service that labor market need. Bingo! Yahtzee! Now we have more economic strength, less unemployment and underemployment, and more of the rest of the world moving to America. We also have far less resistance to increased immigration because immigrants are no longer creating as much downward pressure on the entry-level wage rates. This is about creating opportunities, folks, for everybody. The capitalist economic system may be prone to greed, but it's also robust. We have some leaky pipes to patch, and we have some adjustments to make, but we can fix these problems. It won't end social stratification based on wealth, of course, But economic systems designed to do this are inherently unsustainable. Socialism is a great example. Countries with a command-directed socialist economy invariably face chronic shortages, even famines, because of the lack of incentive to increase production and enhance efficiency. In American politics, progressives and socialists remind me of my friend's co-worker, or for that matter, of when I seasoned food that I was cooking too heavily before it was cooked all the way. Too much change, too fast, with no time for the system to absorb the changes. The economy will become less stable if we change things too fast. Like, for instance, doubling the federal minimum wage over just a few years. And that instability will only serve to foster calls for more change from socialists and progressives, when in point of fact, less change is what's really needed. It just takes small changes and time to let them have their impact. Small adjustments, like at the waterworks where my friend worked, and waiting until the system absorbs those adjustments before making any more. A pinch of spice, and time to simmer so that the spice releases its flavor. We can stabilize the economy and create a lot of jobs. But what we really need to do is reopen the economy and let it reset itself.